Hamilton second, Russell is going to try for the best start he can. What's your prediction? Go on for the start of the race, the first corner right here, Ryan. George in the wall. To be honest, I think Lando is going to be there. <laughs> Lando first into turn one. Well, not in turn one, but I think he's going to be all over the back of the van on, on lap one, yeah. I think you're right. I think George, George off the lane, and then I think before the end of lap one, Lando's going to be there. I think Lando has had some interesting starts recently. Struggled a little bit, which is why I think you're right. This weekend's going to be where it's at to fight those Mercedes because they are going to try and work together, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. I think it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens through the first corner, but they're going to basically need a rear gunner to try and hold Lando off. So whoever's behind after turn one is going to try and let the, let the guy in P1 get a bit of a gap. No, for sure. And it is very clustered through here because from a standing start, they almost don't have to break. They'll flick the car in. This left that we just went through is complete for oh, Formula One car. No lifts, no gears. And then into here, as you'll see, turn three at this 50 board, slam your foot on the brake, down six gears in under 1.5 seconds and fire that Formula One car into this apex. But you do not want to be getting on this sausage curve because the people like Ryan in the garage will be very angry with you. They do some serious damage, can't they, Ryan? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Silverstone's one of the easier tracks on the cars, but places like Austria, where we just were last week, they can really damage the cars over the curves. Yeah, I mean, as a driver, it's so difficult because you really want to get that car nipped in. This is, in my opinion, the most difficult corner in all of racing in the UK. So easy to overslow the car. And here, it's all entirely flat out from this point on, down this incredibly long back straight that we have here at Silverstone, where the driver is going to be concentrating. And this is, I think, the section, this little thing to the left is also important, because this is the section, I think, especially on lap one, we're going to see those people trying to make some very enthusiastic moves. <laughs> this is obviously quite an exposed track. It's very flat here. It used to be an airfield. Um, and so the engineers will be telling the drivers how they're going to do extra changes during the race because it hurts them quite a lot. You probably do. Yeah, I mean, if you guys hang out at all over the edge of the track, you'll feel just how strong that weight is. So they get the wind and all of that at the speed they're going, buffeting the car around. So where the wind is heavily affects how the car handles. And I mean, the team, Ryan, they will set up, they'll try and help drivers, tell them how it's going to go throughout the world, and help them handle it. Like um, and I think also something that's going to be important tomorrow, if the weather continues to be like it's been for the rest of this weekend, the pit stops and the strategy are going to be very important tomorrow as well. So I think the, the guys in the garage are going to have to be on their toes. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, and that's why having two Mercedes at the front together, you can play with that pit strategy a bit like you were talking about earlier to really try and leverage the different strategies that are going on throughout the race and try and make sure you get that best one as Ryan. I'm very popular at the moment. They don't understand that I'm out here on this incredible Silverstone circuit through this picturesque corner that for me is the second. I mean, look at that. Look at that place out there. You'll find me out there in about an hour. Ryan's not invited, but I promise you, out there is where we'll all be. They've got some incredible musicians on across the weekend, so make sure you're out there. If not tonight, then tomorrow night as well. But also, Ryan, as we come in here, you'll see just off to the right-hand side of the truck, the entrance to the old bits here at Silverstone, where Formula 1 cars used to be before that massive wing that we drove past before was built. And as you look through here, you'll see all of the support category cars. F3, F2. And the Porsches are out in the outer paddock. I was about to say that I've been very wrong with no run. So we obviously had a few of the F2 drivers stepping in for FP1s this weekend. So that was quite interesting to see. And uh, Antonelli's gone quite well and he's raced today. Raced today as well. Yeah, I mean, for sure. It's a... No, you're all good. But as you look off here, look, you can see some of the cars. F3 have just been in... Um, the FIA check, so where they're wearing the cars, you can just see them in the back of that garage over there, checking the cars to make sure they're all good after they're racing and qualifying, the mechanics working furiously on the cars. Now, actually, Ryan, they won't be doing that in Formula 1 right now, will they? Those mechanics will be done. 
Yeah, so those cars, the cars for, for the F1 are basically in park Fermi at the moment. So they put a cover over the car, um, and they're not allowed to touch that again until tomorrow morning. So if you see, like, it looks like a sort of a bag over the car almost, and um, that's just to make sure no one's touching it. And the FIA also have some cameras that um, watch the garage overnight as well, just to make sure no 